with, with me practicing together in this time. Uh, in the late, latest classes that I've been teaching, what I'm doing is to share uh, the philosophical, one philosophical principle, which is the same uh, one that we are working on an Instagram challenge that I'm playing. Today, instead of uh, sharing the one that belongs to the day of today, I wanted to share one that is from a couple of days ago that I didn't uh, share when I was teaching because I believe it's really important. So um, we are using principles that we are thinking that we, they can be really helpful in these times. And one of the ones that we shared a couple of days ago is what in Sanskrit we call Santosha. And Santosha is usually translated as contentment, or we can also think it as joy. And um, so I want to read a little something about that and perhaps the inspiration for the practice today. So this is what I put in the Instagram challenge when we were working a couple of days ago in this principle, Santosha Contentment. And it says, in ancient Egypt, after death, the heart was removed from the body to be measured against the weight of a feather. If the heart was found to be heavier than the feather's weight, the person was considered not ready for admission to heaven. The scale, although normally the measure of physical weight, was thought to reveal the degree of emotional heaviness held in the heart. The light-hearted were presumably permitted entry through a special ritual as their physical heart was given a place of honor in the burial plot. So that's the story. And the principle itself, it says, when at peace and content with oneself and others, supreme joy is celebrated. And I put, I believe that our practice is cultivating the understanding that we hold the power to our happiness even if temporarily, temporarily lost, our joy will return the closer we are at peace with what is. Gratitude is the greatest teacher of this piece of philosophy. Appreciation for what we have, rather than how much we want, is a practice that gives us the chance to find peace and lift what weighs our hearts down. I was thinking yesterday um, that um, how things would change if we took by heart this ancient story from Egypt and we thought, uh, I want to get to the end of my life with a light, a light heart, right? Uh, and if, I, uh, if, if just the journey is about being at peace with oneself, working on being at peace with oneself and make things a little bit more lighthearted. Sometimes we take ourselves or everything around us too seriously. So perhaps that uh, can give us the chance to uh, release the things that are weighing us down. So with this um, idea, I, um, I want us to close your eyes in the seat there that you are in comfortably, let your palms rest. And if you feel comfortable with the eyelids softly closing, take a moment to take a few breaths deeply through the nose and exhaling big through the mouth. And we'll take these cycles as a way of releasing what's weighing us down. Also an opportunity to start checking in with our own physical bodies. Big inhalation, big exhale, and one more like that. Settle through your bones into your mat or the support you have. And take a moment perhaps to bring to mind something you find that it's weighing you down, that it's making your heart heavy in this very moment. 
no judgment, no need to fix it or change it. Be a loving observer. We bring calm awareness. And we'll use this practice today as we move through the shapes to shake off and get rid of perhaps those things that are creating heaviness in our hearts, in our bodies, in our souls. Let's bring the palms together into the heart center. And as we enter the practice, maybe you choose to dedicate your journey to someone whom you want to send your love, your strength, your thoughts in this moment. And if you choose and you want to join me, we'll open with one chant on, first inhaling deeply through the nose, big exhale through your mouth, and then when you're ready, breathing in again. Then we connect the head down to the hands and the heart. One moment they are connecting body, heart, soul and mind. Then we release the palms lifting the head, opening the eyes. Again, thank you for being here. We are going to start sitting. So if you feel comfortable where you are, uh, keep it like that. If you need to modify it and you want to cross your shins, you can cross your shins and then we'll switch it around, okay? So from here, just sit tall. Sometimes if your lower back is sensitive, having a support that elevates you can be much better than being flat. Uh, so you can do that. And we are going to lace the fingers in front of us and press the palms in front. Just pressing and letting the upper back open up a little. Inhale deeply through the nose. And exhale also through your nose. And then on the next inhalation, we'll bring the arms up. And we'll try to keep the elbows as straight as we can. We're going to try and lift from the pelvic floor, trying to also lift the belly off your thighs. And try to not pop your ribs out too much. So try to bring them gently in and down as you extend through the arms. And you notice if your head is coming forward, see if you can bring it with your ears to the line of your arms. Push, push, push through the palms. Feel the wrists opening up. Maybe the index fingers are pressing up a little higher than the rest. And then we exhale and release. Beautiful. Now we are going to lace the fingers behind the lower back, roll the shoulders, extend the arms for a moment, and then you're going to bring both your arms like that clasp into your right hip. I'm doing the same as what I'm saying. So onto your right hip, and then from there, let the right ear come towards the right shoulder. If you can, you make your elbows come towards each other a little. And feeling there that stretch, neck, side body, and the shoulder blades breathing and out for three. If you can, as you breathe, you make that breath long, steady, and smooth. If you read like that, it will send the, um, the information to your brain to also relax. And always an opportunity through the practice to notice sensations and places that may be sensitive. We come back with the head, we release the arms behind, we we'll switch sides, we put both hands clasped onto the left hip, relax your legs, lift through the spine and the belly. And if you can, the elbows come towards each other and we take that left ear towards the shoulder. Three breaths again. And like I was saying, an opportunity to find the levity of heart, to release, to take care of yourself in this moment. 
and then we slowly return, releasing the arms, shake them a little. We are going to change that with the fingertips. Oh, let's change the, the cross of the leg. So if you have the right one, put the left one or switch sides and let's bring the fingertips into the shoulders. We are going to lift the elbows as much as we can for you, okay? So you go as far as it goes today. And from here, we're going to take five circles, bringing the elbows towards each other, and then up and back. So my elbows are like crayons or pencils, and I'm trying to draw big circles. And again, observe the breath. Doesn't matter if it's not a very regular pattern, but try to make it steady, long, I think we have two more. And one more, trying to lift that belly off your pelvis. Good. And then we reverse it. Inhale. Exhale. Take five of those at your own pace. Don't need, you don't need to rush. Sometimes going slower lets us become more aware of sensations or things going on. Sometimes there are creaking sounds. It's good because we are actually releasing those things that are compacted or stressed. Good, and then we release there. Last one as we are sitting here, make your right hand come next to your right hip a little further out. If you need to bend the elbow, you can bend it or you can go a little further. We inhale, we send the left arm up to the ceiling and we bring that left arm over to the right. As you do that, if you want, you can press with your right palm down onto your mat so the left side of your hip sitting bone and that side, they stretch a little more towards that side instead of coming over to the right. If you can, you make your right, the right side of your breastbone to come up towards the skies. One more breath. Then push the mat, come back. Good, and we switch sides. Left hand to the side. Right palm, I'm going to turn it up. And again, if you want, you slide that arm a little further or you keep it closer. Right arm cups up and over, trying to spin the chest and the belly towards the ceiling. And my left hand, I'm using it to help me ground my right sitting bone a little more and feel that stretch. Nice, on your next inhalation, we come back and we release that. Beautiful, from here we're going to move into hands and knees. If you need to pad your knees with a blanket, put it there. And the first thing we are going to do is to create what we call uh, pelvic circles. So we are going to imagine the navel has now a crayon or a pen, and you're going to try and draw circles with your navel onto your mat. And with that, you're going to be sending your hips to one side, then back, then to the opposite side, and then towards the face of your mat, or the head of your mat. And as you do a few of those, notice if there's any sensations in your outer hips. If there's a little bit of tightness because you've been sitting quite a bit, you may feel it there, no worries. This is actually for that, to help it open up. And then we're going to reverse it. And you can zigzag a little if you want to add a little more. Three to four times, reversing that movement with circles. Sometimes they start small and then they get a little bigger. Good. Once we come back towards the quadruped, we are going to add a little bit more of hip opening. I'm going to lift through the abdomen and the ribs, and I'm going to bring my head, my chin, uh, towards my left shoulder, and my left hip is going to come towards the same side. So we are squeezing one side and stretching the other, and then going the other way, and again. Chin towards shoulder, hip comes towards that same shoulder, and then I'm going chin to the right, hip to the shoulder as well. 
Again, one side and the other. And one more. Good. Then from here, we take three times the cat-cow. We inhale, we create opening in the front of the spine, sending the chest forward and up, tailbone up. Exhaling, we round, pushing the mat, lift that navel or belly up to the spine. And again, inhale. Exhale. One more, inhaling. Exhale, belly lifts up, chin towards your heart. Then we come back towards the neutral and we extend the arms towards the head of your mat. If you want, you can use your fingertips. It will activate a little more. So check how that feels for you. And the idea here is to keep the sitting bones over your knees and we press the mat away with the fingertips to bring the chest down. For some of us, the chest easily comes down. For some of us, it doesn't. It's not important. The idea is to open up the sides, the chest, and bring the shoulder blades a little closer to each other to also open your armpits and the underside of your arms. Maybe the chin will touch the mat, maybe the forehead, maybe nothing, and you put a block or a book there to help you, and it's all good. Take a few breaths. Good, and then slowly we lift, we come back towards that tabletop, and we sit up on our shins. Left hand is going to stay on the left hip, right arm goes up, extend that arm, and then come towards the left. We try to lift through the abdomen and lengthen through the sacrum, okay? So we create more toning in the core. Then we inhale, we come up, release that right hand, catching your right hip, inhale, the left arm up. And we exhale, we go to the side, lengthening or bringing the glutes into the body, lifting the thighs into your bones. We inhale, we come up and release. Beautiful. From here, I'm going to bring my right foot forward. And that right foot, I'm going to put it all the way out, out to the edge of the mat. So I'm bringing that foot all the way to the corner of my mat. And with my hands down, fingertips or your palms or the blocks if you need, the only thing that we're going to do here is to play a little bit with swinging the pelvis forward and back. If you want, you can pack your back toes. It doesn't really matter. Pick the one that feels better. And we go a few times, you may feel it in your hamstring, you may feel it in your uh, outer hips. See if you can firm your hip bones towards the center of your pelvis as you do that, and press through your right foot, okay? A few times. Relax your jaws, relax your tongue. Keep breathing steady. We'll do two more here. And one more. Good, and before we switch sides, I'm going to come up, moving that foot again a little closer um, to the midline of the mat. You can put your hands on your right thigh or on your hips. Uh, you choose which one. Sometimes for balancing, this one feels easier. So you pick the one. And now from here, we are just going to do a similar action, but the foot is a little um, more narrow, right? And we try and keep that knee towards the second toe in your foot. So we go forward, and then we come back, and again, forward and back. Try to make that right knee track that second toe. Two more. Good, then we come back towards that center and we lift up, pressing into that right foot, toning the inner thighs, inhaling, we send the arms up overhead. I'm not going to lace the fingers, just extend through the arms 
and try and lift that belly off your pelvis, ribs in, hug the hips into the midline, and just lift the sides a little more, perhaps sending the center of your chest or sternum up to the ceiling. My lower back is lengthening down. Good, and then exhale and release. Beautiful, let's put that right knee back. Let's bring the left leg forward. I'm going to send that left foot all the way to the corner of the mat. And I'm going to bring my hands inside. Fingertips or blocks or your hands five times. We'll just play with going forward and back. Like I said before, you may feel it in the outer hips or in the hamstring. No worries about how far you're going, just oiling our joints, creating some space. We tend to hold a lot of emotions in the pelvic area and the hips. So I'm working with a little bit of this so we become lighter in our bodies and also in our hearts. Two more. Good, and then we slowly come back, hands towards the hips, bring that left foot towards your regular place where you would put it, right, a regular low lunge, and then the knee is going to be tracking that second toe, okay? Hands to the hips, like I said before, or on top of your thigh, and we go forward and back, trying to keep lifting that abdomen off the pelvis, hugging the hip bones in, Sacrum down, two more. Good, we come back to the neutral, we send the arms up one more time. Lengthen here, lift that belly off the pelvis, lengthen through the sacrum, that area in the lower back, let it lengthen down to earth and lift the chest a little more. Good, and when, then we slowly release, bring that left knee back. Good, from here we go back towards the hands and knees. And this time we're going to move the knees a few inches behind the hips. The toes are going to go towards the edges of your mat, tuck them. So you have, they are the position to get into downward facing dog. And from here slowly we press the arms, we keep the knees bent and we start sending the sitting bones up towards the ceiling. No worries about trying to touch the heels down. I'm on purpose keeping my knees bent. And then from there, I'm just pushing the mat away, trying to relax the neck and the head. And then slowly working with my core, firming the hip bones in, bringing the lower ribs in and down and lifting through the abdomen towards the sternum. One more breath. Then slowly, if you want, pedal one feet, foot at a time to create a little bit more opening in the backs of the legs. Two more like that. I'm just pedaling my feet a few times. Good, and then I'm going to bring my feet a little closer to each other, more towards the hip distance apart, with the heels very high, and I'm going to bring both heels to the left side of the mat and let them drop down. And I'm going to push the floor away so I can send, send my right hip a little higher. Breathe in and out. If you get tired, you can always bring your knees down and then restart. Then we go up with the heels. And this time we send them to the right side of your mat and we let them drop down and we push the left hip side up. One more breath. Good, then we return with the heels up. Walk your feet towards your hands. Bend your knees. No worries about having the legs extended. Bend the knees, relax the head, relax the neck. If you are not touching the floor or your mat, if it's far, put the blocks or, or books or something there and try to say no with your head. 
And yes, just a few times to release there also and make our necks and upper backs a little lighter. Good. Then we are going to put the hands onto the hips, roll your shoulders back, try to point your elbows up towards the ceiling, press through your feet, coming all the way up and releasing. Good. Okay, shake it a little bit here as you're standing. Good, and from the standing posture, we'll go into a shape and then we'll move a little different. So if you have a block with you or a book or a box, you can use it in case you need it. We are going to send the right foot towards the head of your mat, pointing forward. The back foot is going to have more or less three feet distance. And we're going to keep both legs toned and extended. So in this shape, I'm not going to bend the knee so much, but at the same time, I'm not locking my knees. So there's a little bit of a micro bending action that we let that we let happen. So we know that we are not over uh, forcing our joints, okay? So from here, we are going to work on the right glute hugging the front of your pelvis. So moving into the front of your pelvis and you'll feel how that will make your inner right thigh be more toned and also work a little more. We're going to try and keep the right knee pointing towards your right pinky toe at all times. And from here we'll extend the arms, lengthen through the head sides and let the underarms lift into your bones. And from there, we'll take the trunk as far to the right as we can. And we're going to either touch the shin or a little higher, or you can take the block if you need as we send the left arm up. Now, we are going to take three breaths here before we move. I'm going to move the shape a little, but first I want you to ground through your feet. I want you to bring the uh, belly in and the right glute into your body and then face with your chest and your belly up to the skies. If the neck feels uncomfortable, you can gaze down towards your right toes. And from here, slowly, we're going to slide that right hand up your leg towards your hip. And then we slide it back down towards the heel. And again, up. I'm still hanging that right glute in and then sliding down. Two more up. Like if someone is pulling from your left wrist and down. Use your core, hugging the hips in. Good, and down. This time we stay here and keeping the length in the sides, glutes in, lengthening and opening. I'm going to turn the left palm towards the right side of the room for you guys. And then we open, we bring that left arm over the head. Good, trying to make the right shoulder blade come into the back of your chest. I'm spinning the belly and the chest up. One more breath. Good, then bring the left arm up towards the ceiling and from there lift up into standing. Good. Very nice. This is a very good posture for hips and lower back. So I'm um, using it so we can also get rid of the things that are stuck there. We turn the right foot in. We open the left foot out to the side. Remember, we are not locking our knees. A little bit of a micro bending action can feel good. You put a support if you need it. From here first, we are hugging the sitting bones towards each other and towards the front. Extend through the arms. Relax the shoulders, opening the chest, and we go towards that left side, lengthening the side body as much as possible, then placing that left hand towards your shin or the block or the knee or a little higher. Right arm goes up, roll the shoulders back, spin belly and chest up. I'm really using that left glute to squeeze it into the front of my pelvis so it helps me open up the inner line of my left leg. Again, like I said before, head can be facing down towards the toes if you feel uncomfortable or if it feels sensitive in the neck. And from there, five times, we're going to start that movement of sliding the left palm up your leg. It's like if someone is pulling from your right wrist and then down. And four more up. 
Keep hugging those glutes in to each other and to the front. Three. Two more. And one more. Good. And then we turn the right palm towards the left side of the room. We keep bringing that left shoulder blade into the back of the heart. Right arm up and over. Good, then we re-extend right arm up. Imagine someone pulling from that right wrist. We come up and release. Turn the left foot in, heel toe your feet towards each other and shake it in up. Good, and now we go to the top of the mat. Sorry, I'm moving a little, so I'm not so far. Good, so now we come to the top of the mat. Feet together or they can be hip distance apart. We'll inhale, arms up overhead. Exhaling, we fold, Uttanasana. Inhaling halfway, hands to your shins, lift the belly, extend the front of your spine, shoulders back. Exhale. Inhaling, we come all the way up, pressing the feet into the floor. And with the exhale, we'll go down again. Inhaling halfway again, lengthen the spine like a tabletop. And with the exhale, we put the hands down and we'll walk ourselves into the downward facing dog. Pedal your feet if you need a few times. Remember, we are pushing the mat away. We are trying to bring those lower ribs in. And if you need to keep the knees bent like within the beginning or the feet a little wider, do that. That's all good. Relax the head and the neck. Good. Then we're going to try and bring the feet closer to each other until they touch. And from there, we inhale, we come towards the top of a push-up, a plank. Zip up that belly, ribs in. Exhaling, we go to down dog. And again, inhaling, slowly coming towards that plank. And then exhale. See if you can hug your quads into your bones and lift the whole front of your body into the back and then back to down dog. Good. Let's inhale the right leg up. Bring that right foot forward. Left knee is going to come down to the floor. Come up for a moment. Good, take a deep breath. From here, I'm going to put my hands in front. Maybe you will need a block for this. I'm going to turn so you can see it. And after taking this long lunge, I'm going to make both my arms and my hands and fingers come towards the right. So maybe the block will be helpful to create a lift there and twist and come towards the right side. Maybe like I'm showing with the block, it helps you press that right foot. And as you push into the block or you use it as support, lift the belly, lift the chest off your thigh and twist it a little bit more towards the right. Take a breath, and one more. Good, then we come back, you can leave the block to the side. Left hand on your mat, and we twist to the right, inhaling, exhale. One more, Exhale, release, right hand down, right leg back, we go to down dog. We'll take one inhalation into the plank. We lower using the knees if you need first. Make sure that you're taking care of your back and then coming down into the mat. Fingertips outside your mat, rolling the shoulders back, extending through the legs. Again, we're going to lift through the front of that belly so we feel more of the pubic bone touching down. And then from there, we inhale, we lift the chest. Exhale and release. Two more like that. Inhaling, shoulder blades into each other, the sternum telescopes up towards the ceiling in front of you. Exhale. One more. Good. Let's bring the hands under the shoulders. 
bend the knees for the tabletop, widen your knees, go back into a child's pose. We'll stay here for three breaths. You can relax your elbows down. Take a moment to feel the body, reset the breath. Good, and then from there we go up to down dog, so we take the second side. Stay in down dog for one full breath. I'm switching so you can see me again. And then from that down dog, feet together, left leg goes up. Left foot comes forward, right knee comes down. If you want the block, you use it. You can lift from here, lift the belly of the pelvis, and with the hands, with the block, you walk yourself all the way to the left. We are trying to create a squeezing action there. So I'm lifting and I'm bringing belly and chest to the other side. My inner thighs are hugging towards each other. And I'm breathing here for two. Good. Releasing with your exhale. Then we slowly come back, right hand down, we twist to the left, opening the chest, keep that left knee tracking that second toe. Good, releasing the left hand down, we go back to downward facing dog. If you want the feet coming together again for plank, then we lower. Inhaling to the cobra pose, exhaling to down dog. Good, pedal your feet, inhale your right leg up towards the skies, firm the hips, belly in, ribs in, right foot comes forward, left foot turns all the way down and back. We come up and we'll take the warrior two shape. I'm not going to take the warrior two just now, but yes, the legs are the same. My right forearm is going to rest gently into that right thigh. And the work that I want us to do mainly here is to widen that right inner thigh and press it back. If you press it back, it's going to open all that line and your hips. And you will also feel that right glute hugging more towards the front of your pelvis. So that's what we are doing there. Right forearm onto the thigh. Spin the belly and the chest towards the ceiling to the left and send that left arm up and over. Try to create levity or lightness by not dropping your body into that right thigh, but make it be strong and your body is lifting off that thigh. One more breath. Good, then we come back, warrior two. And from here, we lace the fingers behind the lower back, roll the shoulders, extend through the arms. One more breath. Good, we re-extend, windmill your hands. Let's go back to down dog. We inhale to plank. Lower, you can always skip this part if you don't feel like it's for you. Just stay in down dog and you wait. Inhaling cobra, exhale, down dog. Good, take one full breath here through your nose. Exhale through the mouth. And we go to the second side, inhaling the left leg up. Left foot forward, right foot comes down. And from there, we set that three feet distance to come up. Good. We are turning that back leg. The inseam of that right leg is lifting into your bones. Now drop the left sitting bone, hug it into the front of your pelvis. And remember, we are lengthening that left inner thigh, and we are pressing it back towards the wall that you have behind. Left forearm onto that left thigh. Right arm comes up and over, spin belly and chest up. Try to keep squeezing that left glute towards the front of your pelvis. 
Steady breath. Then we return, keep the warrior two in the legs, lift through that inner right thigh, lace the fingers again behind the lower back, rolling the shoulders, extend, drop maybe a little further down with that left back bone. One more breath. Good, then we re-extend. And in this one, we're going to straighten the front leg, turn the left foot in, Bring them a little closer. Bring your hands onto your hips. Lengthen through the sacrum, lift through the navel up towards the sternum. Roll the shoulders back. We are going to fold over using our hips like the, uh, as the hinging place. So I'm lifting through the chest, rolling shoulders back. And whenever I feel like I need support, that's where I'm going to bring my hands down maybe a little further in towards the line of the feet. If that's possible, you can use your blocks or books and then release there through the head. If you have the um, ability to have your hands touching down, then you can create a tripod uh, shape with the crown of your head and your palms. That means that your eyes are able to see your hands. And then from there, work with the shoulder blades coming towards each other as you release the neck and the head. The legs here are super toned. You're lifting through your inner arches up to your inner thighs. From the inner thighs, you're lifting into the pelvis. Stay there for a few more breaths. If you have a practice of going upside down and you want to take this, moment to go into that headstand, you can. Good. Slowly from there, bringing the hands again into the hips, press through the feet, lift the sternum, coming up. Got one more thing here, standing. We're going to open the right foot to the right and bring that back foot a little closer, the leg the, the leg in and turn that left foot also in. It's a little bit more into a diagonal. You can open that right foot a little further out to the right. And from here again, lifting through the spine, arms up, lengthen, lift the belly off the pelvis, extend the torso parallel to the floor. And now squeeze or hug that right hip bone into your body or send it back and then we fold over that front leg. This may be a little bit of a challenge for the hamstring or the hip, so you can bend the front knee if you need. You can bring the back foot forward, or you can use the blocks as support, books or anything there to help you. This is a big hip opener also. Right hip moves back, lifting the sternum, lifting the belly in, and then you drop. Last of the standing postures. One more breath. And then slowly from there, we walk ourselves towards the left. So we turn around to the other side. We are already in the shape. You adjust the legs if you need. Press through the feet. Hug the left hip bone into the body and back. Inhale, lengthen, bring your books and your stuff with you if you need them. And from here we fold. Micro bend the front knee if you need. Try to keep the back foot grounded, pressing into that outer edge of your right foot. Release the trunk. One more breath. Soften the skin in your face. Tone the inner legs, then slowly lifting through the trunk, come back towards the center, heel toe your feet until they are a little closer, and from there we'll take a squat. Again, an idea here to roll a blanket and put it under your heels if you need. You can also use a block under your sitting bones 
and create the shape of the squat. It's perfectly fine. It's teaching your body to get into the shape. Super good for digestion, for the hips. Take a few breaths. And in this mild rest that we are taking, an opportunity to come back to being the loving observer of your physical body, any thoughts, emotions, also checking in again with the breath and the energy body. Maybe you're feeling some heat after this practice and that heat is the fire that we are igniting to release what's weighing us down. So in gratitude for this practice, we let those things move out of our bodies, our hearts, our thoughts without judgment, without condemnation. From here, slowly, if you have the support, take it out or use your hands to come to a seat. And we'll come onto our backs, right foot on top of the left thigh. You can keep the shape as it is. If this already feels like it's a lot in that right hip or hamstring, you can bring the knees a little closer to the chest and thread your right arm inside that right leg, hugging the left shin perhaps, or Hamstring in, two breaths here. We are starting to move towards more rest. So let the back plane of your body relax down, the back of your head, the back of your chest, the shoulders, and then slowly release that side, switching left foot over the right thigh. You can stay here where you are if this is already enough, or you can choose to thread the left arm inside the leg and bring that Compound of both knees and legs towards the chest. Take a few breaths, relax the shoulders, soften the face. Then we slowly release that. Put your feet to the edges of your mat so you have wide knees. And let both uh, arms can be to the sides like a T-letter or a cactus shape. If you have the space for opening the arms to the sides, you can do that. We're going to windshield wiper the knees to the left side, then back to the center, then towards the right. Coming back to the center. And again to the left, back to the center, to the right. Do it a few times like that, just releasing the lower back and also feeling the sensations in the inner and outer thighs. Just a few more times. Good. And then, if you have block or something similar, use it as a support. It can be flat, it can be medium height, or it can be the uh, highest point. This one might be a little too much. We're going to use it under the pelvis. That means that the block goes where the sacrum is, at the very end of your spine. Once you find that, for me this one, maybe the right one, but it's not for everyone because it's a big back bend. Press into your feet, the knees stay over those second toes, walk your shoulders away from your ears, and feel that expansion that we are creating in the uh, chest. 
This backbend can be intense, that's why I said it can be done on the flat side and you're still bringing the same benefits into your lungs, your upper body, the collarbones expanding, reversing the rounding in the upper back, staying here, relaxing the back of the skull into the floor and your pelvis into that block. If you're looking for a more active bridge pose and you don't want to use the support, maybe you already know this, you can just press into the mat, lift without the support, lace your fingers and squeeze perhaps those shoulder blades a little closer to each other, lifting through the pelvis, toning the hamstrings. If you are recovering from a low back surgery, or anything like that, don't force anything that may not be appropriate for you, okay? So blocks and supports are excellent and they create the same benefits in the postures as we are doing them without, okay? After that, support or less support, one more breath, take yourself down, lift the pelvis if you have the support to take it out, Soles of the feet together, knees go wide. Bring your palms onto your belly and give yourself three long, smooth breathing cycles here. Again, a chance to take that out breath as a gift to letting go. Releasing what makes us heavy in our hearts to become lighter as a feather. Keep the skin in your face soft, relaxing the forehead down to the temples, eyelids, the areas around your nose and your lips, cheeks down to your chin. And then slowly with your hands, invite the legs to come closer to each other, bring both the knees into the chest, rock from side to side. And keeping both knees together, again, arms to the side or a cactus shape, bring them both to the right. We are creating a twist here. So again, go gentle. If this feels like it's too much, you can bring that block or support underneath the legs so they are more elevated and it creates less of a twist or compression in the lower back, okay? The chin can go to the left as your knees are to the right. You can also use your right hand on top of the left knee to create just a little bit of extra um, weight there without pushing. One more breath on this side. And then we bring it back. Bring both knees to the chest again. If you need to shift your hips, do that. And then we take both knees to the left, chin to the right. Again, left hand can hold that right knee. Relaxing the shoulders. Softening here before the end. One more breathing cycle, long, steady, slowing down. And then we return. Good, if you want to have a happy baby here or hold the insides of your feet and press your knees down and rock a little bit from side to side, lengthening the spine, you can add that. If you feel like you're ready to come to rest, 
extend through the legs, relaxing arms to the sides or bringing the palms on top of your pelvis, softening, coming to rest. The last posture that we always take in our practice is called Shalasana, it means corpse pose. And it's an opportunity to release all the doing that we just performed, let's say, or all the exercising and practicing and the chance to come back to the source, which is silence, stillness, returning to our bodies, and our souls. So no need to do anything here, talk to anybody or go anywhere or change anything. Just let yourself be in this moment and I'll let you know when we close the practice to say our goodbyes. Use your exhales to help you feel more grounded. Coming closer and deeper into the core of the earth. Take a deep inhalation through the nose, a big exhale through your mouth, letting it all go. Keeping the face soft, the eyes relaxed, invite gentle movements through your fingers, your toes. Choose the way you want to return to your body. Reconnecting with gentle movements, maybe rolling your wrist, you're moving your hands, moving your feet. Perhaps you want to bring gently your head from side to side. And then when you feel ready, bend your knees, place your feet on your mat. From there, slowly roll over to your right side. Take a moment there on the side. You can bring your knees towards your abdomen or towards the chest. And then we slowly press up and we come to a seat.
find the seat like the one you had in the beginning, comfortable where you can settle for a moment. And after you take the seat, invite your eyelids to soften again, bring your palms together, let them rest right in front of your heart center for a moment. And take notice, be a witness. Physical body sensations, the breath, thoughts, emotions that may be showing up after this journey. And as I always say, also the opportunity to gather this experience as part of our spiritual journey growing into finding ourselves the way we are without judgment and when we get to that place we find this levity this light-hearted place of joy contentment gratitude for the simple things. In gratitude for this practice and to all of you who joined me today, thank you so much for practicing with me. Let's close this journey with the own sound if you choose to join, inhaling deeply through the nose, big exhale, then breathing in again. Oh. We bow in. Namaste. Thank you so much. Thank you very 